Three, two, one, go. Okay. <laughs> Easy done. Easy done. Okay, Borna, now that we have that uh, Mexican standoff out of the way, <laughs> what are we talking about today? Uh, we're talking about the Ball Engineer 3 Marvelite Chronometer, mm -hmm. uh, which is, yeah. I had a long name for a pretty simple watch. And look, there's, there's a perennial appeal to the simple watch. And of course, as you're looking at this, I'm sure there are other models coming to mind from other brands that, that really go for this classic sort of mid-century, classic era of the wristwatch type of... 300 with date at 40 mil. That's uh, as classic as it gets. It's really. hitting all the spots. And then of course, what you're seeing here in addition to this very on-trend, colorful trio of dials is this super creamy, vintage looking indexes. Tell me more about the history. So Ball is an American brand, uh, at least an American founded brand. Now they use Swiss movements and they produce their watches in Switzerland. They were founded in... Short of one. Yeah, yep. yeah. They were founded in 1891 by a Mr. Webster Clay Ball, mm -hmm. or Webb, uh, mm -hmm. Webb C. Ball as he's often referred to as, after this horrendous, horrendous uh, train crash uh, just outside of Cleveland, Ohio. So basically what happened is uh, the Toledo train mm -hmm. uh, normally leaves the station and just after it gets out it pulls to the side and lets the 14 mail train by, which you know, at that time is running at full speed. But because it left the station late, because mm -hmm. the engineer's watch was about four minutes late, historians guess, uh, it was a head-on collision because mm -hmm. it didn't get out of the way in time. It should have never left the station, but it did. And uh, yeah, basically the, the American Railroad Corporation decided yeah, they, they need to put a stop to that to make sure it doesn't happen. So Mr. Mr. Ball decided to incorporate some of these uh, basically standards for, for timekeeping, which were actually established two years later in mm -hmm. 1893. The rest is history, really. Yeah, he was a jeweler and within no time at all, he was regulating a million watches. That's, that's what I read about this. Incredible. So it became a case of not just instituting standards, but then regulating all the watches that were keeping American railroads on time. So that's why you see RR as a recurring theme through exactly. ball watches. There's, we're looking at it right here on the, on the counterbalance, quite elaborate on a, on a nice and simple watch. Yep, really evokes that design era. And also just whenever you see ball uh, watches, whenever you see their, their imagery around the brand, there's, there's trains everywhere. Exactly. It's because that is their claim to fame. Yeah, that, that, that's right. That's well, right. that was their first claim to fame. Their second claim to fame. The tritium tubes. Exactly. Which, yeah, they've really become known for. They've used them in, in rainbow colors. I um, love that one. I love that they, one. They are pretty cool. They are yeah. pretty cool. Um, there ain't no loom like ball loom. Never heard that saying before, but, but there, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so in this case, it's actually quite an interesting uh, incorporation because often on, on, on balls you see these thin, long tubes mm -hmm. uh, that it, it makes it obvious that they're tritium. In these, especially on the indices, they're, they just look like very chunky loom plots. Yeah. It gives real nice depth to the dial, Does. but they are tritium. Yeah. So if, you, if you're not familiar, tritium basically, it doesn't glow quite as strongly as Luminova, mm -hmm. uh, but it lasts near indefinitely. It mm -hmm. does have a half-life, but that's all sort of, it, it's going to last longer than you will. Mm. Um, yeah, and that, that's sort of the, the claim to fame for tritium. These watches come in at the two and a half thousand US dollar mark? Uh, about that, yes. Yeah, Sorry. and we're talking about a COSC certified ESSA movement, uh, and for me, a zinger, a real zinger. I am a huge fan. I have spent many hours on YouTube um, advocating for 904L steel as the most comfortable steel I've ever experienced on all Rolex models. And also the Girard Perigo Laureato is 904L steel. There's something super special about not just this material uh, on paper, but certainly on wrist. So I'm very happy about that. Yeah. But tell me what you think of these specs because and, and let's run through them first. Give, yeah, give people for an sure, idea. For sure. So you, you've got a 40 millimeter size, like we mentioned before. Classic, can't go wrong. 47 and a half millimeters, <coughs> lug to lug. Again, will suit many, many wrists wrist. perfectly. So you're six uh -huh. Six, oh, not, not quite, unfortunately. 6.15, there mm -hmm. thereabouts. Um, and those dimensions work just perfectly for me. However, uh, the dimension you should really pay attention to here is the thickness, which is 13.15 millimeters. I, I call it a little hamburger on the wrist because it's, mm. it's quite compact, though quite tall. Mm. And for a non-dive watch, it does 
it does sort of sit quite proud. I've got a sort of flat wrist on top, so you mm -hmm. might, maybe you can't notice it as much, but on yours, it's actually quite noticeable how, how proud it sits. There's a lot to like about the way this watch comes together because you do have this, uh, this really quite a, a regal sun ray, like it's got the, real richness to it. The dial really is beautiful. The Dauphine yeah. hands work really well here. Yes. Uh, the, and I, sort of if you, if you told me, you know, fine Dauphine hands with these sort of chunky, uh, chunky indices, maybe I think that wouldn't work so well. But looking at it here, it's, it's nice, it's legible. And while we're going in depth, Borna, I mean, for me, there's two obvious comparisons here. And one is the Tissot Gentleman at a much lower price point. Yeah. And again, yeah. obviously this is a very different fit and feel and the steel quality. And also the, there's a really there's, dimensional, huge price. Absolutely, there's lots of facets, these sort of blocky little links. They're really nicely articulating as well, which yeah. if you are going to do a, a big link bracelet, it needs to articulate well, it's which a, this does. It's a big link bracelet. It, it, it folds on it itself which is yeah. always the test that I do. If, if, that, if it does that, then it, it yeah. passes the test. So you've got the Tissot Gentleman at the, oh, I'd say the budget end or the entry yeah. level end, and then at the other end you have obviously the Rolex Lost of Petrol. Something like an Aquaterra, uh, exactly. Yeah, an Aquaterra Omega as well. So it's sitting right between, um, there are some options in this, in this style, and yet I would say, given the generosity of the material and then the quality of the, the build quality of the case and the bracelet, there is a compelling proposition here if you can you can live with that extra height for what is effectively a simple time only watch. Exactly, exactly. But it also should be mentioned that uh, Ball did build in a certain anti-magnetic resistance in here with mm -hmm. their MU metal shield. So it's sort of it's basically a similar to other soft uh, soft iron shields that they build in, though with uh, some added materials for for extra resistance. And one last thing before we go, Bonner, is there's other colours. We just didn't choose them because that, we're, right. we're liking color right now. Yep, well, absolutely. <laughs> color is all, all the rage. So we have a black color, a navy color, a gray. Here we have the ice blue, the green, and the burgundy. Yes. So we're missing three. So there you have it. Uh, I chose the burgundy with cream. Yeah. And you chose I chose, the... I, I chose the ice blue. I'm sort of in an ice blue phase at the moment. I, As I is everybody. <laughs> well. I try not to follow trends, but it is a nice color. It is. And again, with that cream, and there's the black and the navy as well. What did you think? We always look forward to the comments, don't we? Yeah, yeah, it's always interesting to read. I'm still waiting for my first hey comment, so I don't know. Come on, guys. Pick, pick, pick something. Is it the hair? Yeah. Is it the glasses? Is it the weird accent that you can't quite place? <laughs> Bring it me. on. Come at me, bro. Yeah, exactly. See you in the comments, and thanks for watching.